Yeah, it's fine. That thing looks yeah. sweet. Yeah, it works so pretty good. I uh, haven't um, cured anything yet, but uh, the first print uh, went well. The standard um, uh, any cubic print. Then we are live. <laughs> yeah, we're live. Yeah. Um, I'm printing the Hulk right now. It's uh, probably done in five or six hours, I think. You're printing the Hulk? Yeah. <laughs> I like opened the a bottle of rum. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I have a bottle of Fanta. Because <laughs> I need a drink. Yeah. Not been a great day. Okay. Oh, no, yeah. the 2 by 4 incident? Yeah. Oh, it got worse. Oh. We all, after that, we take a, you know, my parents take a nap. I really don't. But yeah. I kind of come up here and hang out and get away from them and let them nap. Yeah. Well, my father goes, oh, I'm going to go upstairs and see Tom to my mother. What's up, Brian? And uh, walks out the door. Oh. About 3 o'clock this afternoon, the cops and the ambulance show up, and my father walked a mile and a half down the road. Just Holy crap. Randomly walked down the road. Yeah. Fell over into the bushes. Luckily, a cop was literally driving by as my father fell over. Said, you know, pulled over and said, hey, you are right. Noticed here he is in his slippers and a robe. In his, oh. in his pajamas, basically, and began to figure out what was going on, called the ambulance. A couple of the people in the ambulance crew kind of knew, because my brother used to be in the ambulance with them, so they kind of yeah. knew who he was and where he lived, and next thing I know, I got two cops in the ambulance in the driveway, and, is this your father? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> That's no fun. So, yeah, he took off. That's a new one. He never yeah. done that one before. He, you know, the dementia's been there, but he hasn't been that bad until today. Oh, but the it, sucks. actually, in a way, it's a good thing because a week ago he started getting really weak again and like stumbling and falling down, and here he is now walking a mile down the road. Well, yeah, physically good then. <laughs> so, yeah. and he's still shuffling around the house. I, I don't get it. I don't know how he got a mile down the road without falling over. <laughs> I really oh. don't. He must. He, I have a feeling because. When he got here, you know, the, the even the cop said, you know, he fell in a bush, and yet he's covered in dirt and mud. I have a feeling he keeled over more than once and just kept on going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that sucks, man. Oh, let's see. Anybody on chat, though? Brian Wines and Kits. Hey. Yeah. You know, Kit. Uh, no. What you don't know you're hinting at is already in works. <laughs> <laughs> We're already working on that, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah, that should be good. I, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm going to try and do some of that tonight. I might crash out before I get to that, but I will yeah. in the morning if I do. No rush, no rush. Uh, I kind of want now. I'm kind of I'm one of those. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm kind of no, at that is. point now that we know it's all going to work. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, it'll be cute, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not that yeah. fun to watch the printer. Uh, doesn't happen much. Yeah. Well, at least for a while. You know, the only the only sad part about resin printers, they don't have that mesmerizing, you know, mm -hmm. see it as it's going thing, because you can't really see it. No. You yeah, know, FDM is kind of cool because you watch it go around. I mean, I can yeah. still, to this day, I don't do it as much as I did when I first got it, but I still can sit back and just watch one of my printers go. Yeah, me too. Hours <laughs> at a time. Yeah. It's, it's, inter just it's interesting. It. Yeah, it's, huh? it's mesmerizing. It's like sitting, yeah. at a, you know, sitting staring at a, at a fire. That's the way I relate to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pop up the chats here. So I can see it. Uh, yeah. I changed the stream picture. I don't know. What did you guys see? get, Brian? What did you guys see for a stream? Um, you know, thumbnail picture. My back itches, and I have to scratch it because it's driving me nuts. And this freaking thing's too goddamn weak and keeps spinning on me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it, baby. What did you guys see for a for a thumbnail? Did you see the picture of the printer or? 
Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> I sold a banana. <laughs> Did you see the banana? So it quit that. It switched over that fast. Yeah. But I originally uploaded it with the, a picture of the printer and arrows and talking about the beds. And I said, screw that. That's too boring. Yeah. We need a banana. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm out of freaking run. Yeah, a little yeah. bit left. This is wholly depressing. Oh, almost empty. <laughs> Sorry, I have another whole bottle in Rhode Island. I just gotta go get it. <laughs> my, my brother bought me a bottle when I was over there, and I never brought it home with me. Yeah, I should just go buy another bottle. It's so freaking expensive. Yeah, alcohol is expensive. Try buying it in Norway. So <laughs> here it's really honestly, it's expensive. probably almost cheaper there. Uh, I don't think so. This isn't U.S. made. This is made in the in the Caribbean. Yeah, we, we have a oh, well, yeah, bit it's probably tax. Expensive. Yeah, ta taxes. Lots of taxes. I have a brand new bottle of gin and a brand new bottle of vodka and a brand new bottle of tequila. Um, that sounds like you've got a brand new bottle issue there, buddy. You need to start drinking more. <laughs> You're not alcoholic enough if you have brand new bottles. <laughs> How long ago did I get this? My brother got me this, what? God, in March? That's how much I drink. And that's actually, I've been drinking more lately than I normally do. Yeah. Mostly on streams, because that's when I drink is at night and I'm streaming. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't uh, drank anything since 1997. <laughs> when I was 17, I quit. I started when I was 13, though. So I got some years. <laughs> what was that? I stopped drinking when I, when I was 17. You started or stopped? Stopped. I started when, uh, when I was uh, 13. Yeah, that's about when I started drinking. Yeah. 13, 14 when I started. Yeah. I was never a big drinker anyways. Uh -huh. Even in high school, I mean, I went out drinking with my buddies and stuff. But drinking has never been... I have a weak stomach, so I get sick too easily. So I was never a, you know, I drink a six pack. I'm twisted. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't drink. I'm not. A, I could never drink that much. Now, back in high school, smoking pot, I was a major pothead. I was yeah. <laughs> freaking. Well, it was even worse as I was dealing it too. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't a big dealer. I was just, I basically had a connection where I could buy pot and I could buy a quarter pound. Yeah. And I could sell three ounces of it and keep one ounce for myself and keep it for free. Yeah. But people freak when they find out how little I paid for pot. I, my very first quarter pound of pot cost me $19. <laughs> <laughs> quarter pound. We're not yeah. talking a baggie. We're talking a quarter pound pillow. Yeah. That's <laughs> a few days. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to call it my pillow. Yeah. I get a pillow of pot. Yeah. I don't even bother that that. I quit selling it when my quarter pound hit 120 bucks. I quit smoking it when I when I actually had to start paying for it. It's like screw that. <laughs> it it. Yeah, yeah. I used to smoke a lot of pot in high school. <laughs> I've only done it a few times before yeah. I stopped drinking. So. <laughs> I don't do anything like that anymore. Yeah, I, and again, I don't really drink that much. No. I drink more on stream than I do anything else. And that's yeah. not very often. Once or twice a week, maybe. And then yeah. I have one or two and I'm twisted. Yeah. But anyway. That's not much. Oh. Oh. Do you I like that thing yet? What have you mm -hmm. printed? Put something up. Didn't you print something earlier? Yeah, but I, I haven't cured it yet. It's uh, standing in the window waiting for the sunlight tomorrow. <laughs> oh, well, you can hold it up in front of the camera. Uh, mm. Just a sec. <laughs> man, we got a ticket. Need to grab it. Your room must reek with that thing running in it. I 
I can't hear, hear you now. You can't really see it because of the water glare. Oh, what is that? The lattice QB thing? Stand on any QB cube. I can sort of see it. I don't know if these guys can. What's up, Naked Carl? <laughs> I swear you got to do a naked design. You got to do a naked night printer. Oh, I can hear you again now. I think you need to, Carl. I think you need to do a naked night. Naked night? <laughs> naked night. Because it's, yeah. is, you know, is yeah, naked, naked, yeah. Knack, naked designs. <laughs> you know, knack 3D designs. But yeah. it looks like naked designs. True. So <laughs> I was thinking you should do a knack 3D printer. Yeah. You know, knack 3D night. Instead of the white night and act 3D night, and it'll be naked night. <laughs> <laughs> True. I think that would be hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I agree. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, looked like a torture cube. That's pretty much what it was. It was a lattice cube. Yeah. 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 It's on. Uh, it's on the USB. <laughs> yeah. Well, you always call me underwear. Yeah. Well. BVDs are underwear, or used to be. Does BVD even exist anymore? You know, I was thinking about that the other day when I saw you on, uh, I don't know, what was the last big one? I think the first layer or something we were watching, and you, I called you that. And I thought about it. I said, I don't, does BVD, the company, even exist anymore? I don't think they do. I haven't uh, heard I don't of know. in years. <laughs> well, you probably do. Oh, actually, you probably do have them over there. They were pretty international. Uh, I can't remember seeing it. BVDs. Yeah. Brian Vines Designs. That's what you should be. BVDs. <laughs> uh, I should probably call it a night. It's getting late here. Yeah, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning or something? Three thirty. <laughs> Dude, go to bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I probably should. Half the time you're up before I am in the morning. I get up at five here. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Brian. <laughs> I talk later. Yeah, all right. I'll yeah. try and work on that tonight or first thing in the morning. Awesome. <laughs> I want to get that done. Yeah. It's, we it's might incorporate so cool. that printer with it too. To do some of the fine details and like glue them on. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, for sure. We'll do like jewels. You know, some of them were jeweled. Yeah. We could do that. What colors do you have? Do you have like crystal colors, like reds and greens and that kind of crap? Uh, I've got a green that's uh, standard for the, for the end cubic and uh, light gray. Mm -hmm. Because I'm uh, thinking about painting and stuff. Yeah, well, the green you could do like jewels with, though. You could do little emeralds. Yeah. Cool. True, true. Then you can just yeah. oh, you glue them in there and you don't have to paint them or nothing. Yeah, that should work oh, fine. That would, be cool. that would be cool. Anyway, yeah. all right. Yeah. Later, man. Talk, talk later. Bye, guys. You out of here too, Brian? Who's even here? Anybody else want to jump in? Later, Brian. Later, underwear. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help. Now I gotta find out if BVD even still comes in. Share screen. Let's go looking for some BVDs. Let's get out of Facebook. BVD. BVD is a viral disease of cattle. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even know that. No, is it underwear? But it's a viral disease <laughs> for cattle. Does BBD underwear even exist anymore? I guess they do, because you can buy underwear on Amazon that are BBDs, men's BBDs. There you go. That's pretty funny. I got a fusion question. All right. Here. Uh, 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 oh, crap. I don't care. 
Stop sharing screen. I got to get this up. Invite. Copy. Anyone wants to jump in, they can. Doesn't mean I'm going to actually let you in. <laughs> Come on over, Carl. I was going to talk about, um, you know, 3D printer beds because everyone kept going, you got to level your bed, you got to do this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no. That printer, you can't get to bed any more level than I level it. It's not level. It's flat. Where's a Carl? There's no Carl there. There he is. How's it going? It's going. You got to fix that camera, dude. That's all like freaking max headroom. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. But I need a share screen anyway, so hopefully that doesn't glitch. Share. There we go. So my question is, I'm building the assembly. Okay, everybody, sneak peek. Ooh, uh, I keep adding all, you know, when you go to add each piece and you got to come over here and right click and go insert in the current design. Yeah. Is I've got so many pieces in here now. I got to scroll through it. Is there any way to create groups of all yep. these pieces? Select them and hit group. <laughs> okay, so let's see. And actually, I think you got to select one, right click, and then it'll say group, and then you can select a whole bunch to add to the group. Or I think you, um, I haven't, because I don't group much. Um, I think you create the group and then you drag them into it, or so, there's a way. Left click or right click on it, and it should create, create group, right? Up there. Right. Rigid group, or I can't read it because it's so small. Well, ri rigid group is when you lock a bunch of pieces together, so when you move one, they all move. Next part. I know there's a way to group. I just don't do it that much because I don't make that many. Rigid group, share link. You know what? Try dragging one on top of the other. Just grab one and drag it and put it on top of the other one. You got them both selected, so Oops. they won't do it. Nope. I know there's a way, dude. I just can't remember how. Because the other thing that'll make it run faster, if you're making the same thing over and over and over, even if you're you're angling it and relocating it, you're better off copy pasting than you are redragging a new model in. It won't let it won't let you. Yeah, well. I tried, and the only way I could get it to let me add each piece in, I went on to the fusion how-to thing and it said, Yeah, you have to save it over here. You have to right click and go insert into current design if you want right. to keep it linked like this. Right, but you and can I, take one of those now and copy and paste it. Well, and it makes another linked one. Like when I did the bearings, correct. But it, it's it's a, it's a copy of that link, so it's not inserting a whole new model. It'll well, just I make the file I mean, format smaller and it'll make it run faster. When I when I did this, I inserted this first one. Yep. And then I copied and pasted each of these in here. Yeah. And it created the links. Oh, uh, Terry said you can do it under the assembly tab. You can make okay. it a group. Under the assembly uh, tab. Yeah, up on top. Up in the main menu bar up on the top. See where it says assembly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a rigid group again. That's not create a group. Yeah. There is a way. I know there is because <laughs> I've done it. It was a long, long time ago, but I've done it. I'm trying to get the chat popped yeah, out. He here. doesn't want to create a joint or anything. He just wants to group all the like 2020 together and all the angle brackets together. So they're a single group. And I yeah, know like, there's a way. Yeah. Like all my extrusion pieces in a file and, and I'm yeah. sitting here going, I'm looking at going, there's got to be an easier way. I mean, at some point here, I'm going to have to add all the T-nuts and the, the metric five screws. There has got to be an easier way. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, if I go into Big Master Car and I bring in the screw and I... Yeah, no, you can group them in an assembly, Terry, but you can't... That's not the same thing. What's that's that? making an assembly. He's talking about using the assembly tab. And it's not 
the yeah. same thing. It, well, it kind of is. I mean, you could pull it off that way, but I know there's a way you can group it. I just can't remember exactly how. Yeah, because you mean have to it'd be nice if I could put all the all the extrusions in one and all you know, or the bottom so never, of the chassis and the bearings in one group and. Actually, I got something that can do it. I hate that all stuff. Come on. Let's see if I go to my and let's do this so you guys can all see me share screen. Application window, fusion, share. Okay, mine's already up there. Printer parts. Let's see. Do I don't have one in here? I hate this arrow goes back all the way to the main one instead of just back to this. <laughs> I never think about going back to that. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find something I know I have like a boatload of parts on. Of course, why? I know the hot end I do. Right here. Let's see. I know there's a way to group it because I've done it before. What did I just do? Because I think I have some stuff grouped here. And I'm pretty sure if you take this, you can know. Shift. Hmm. I can make a new component, but then I can't have it. Anything I put in that group won't work, so undo that. Align components. Properties. Cancel. Because <laughs> the problem is the way I did this, I don't have any bodies. I wonder if I needed to make a new body somehow. And then assign each one to a different, you know, to different bodies. Well. But because, I mean, I literally started with a blank page and then just kept bringing components. Because I, I ran into an issue where there, if there was a body, every time I started trying to align stuff, even though I would do the, uh, you know, the, the capture position, it would. I would go to move something and attach it, and it would flip everything around. All totally stupid. The only way I could get it to stop doing that was to not have any like original body that this whole assembly was attached to. Okay, open up the components. I don't have components. Yeah, that's just it. There is no components. There's no bodies. Oh, you could. Even though you can nest components, you can nest them. No, that was not helpful. <laughs> you know, it looks like it stopped because you used to be able to, and now everyone's saying that they can't do it anymore. Because I, I could swear I dragged them, dropped them. Click the bodies I want to. Okay, control, control. I'm reading their little forms now, control. and it seems like they stopped allowing it. Right. You literally right. used to just drag yeah. and drop one on top of the other, and it would group them. There you go. There is no add to group. Open up each part. I wonder if I got to do that. Well, it looks like you can't. All you can do is nest them. That's new. You used to be able to. Nope. You used to be able to just literally take it, grab it, and drag it, it up. Carl, by the way, that would, that's would okay. them together. Was it? I always mess up how you're supposed to pronounce this person's name. So Terry Doe, and I'm it's probably, it's I probably, Terry. Huh? His name's Terry. Terry. Okay. 
Sorry, Terry. He wants we to see call theory because it looks like theory, but it's not. Yeah. His actual name is Terry Dex. He he wants to see my screen. Oh, did I stop your screen share? You did. There you go. There you go. Terry Dew. Yeah. That's his actual name. Terry Dew? Yeah. Theoretically Deuce. I I figured the the, the D E U X was do. Yeah. I've, I've been overseas enough to know that, but I was like, okay, uh, the first name was throwing me. Yeah, you butchered my name first, so we're even now. Got my what? name completely wrong. He called me Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I, I'm, the, I'm the least. I am not a English Nazi. I am the exact opposite. I am the English peasant because <laughs> I'm terrible at it. I can't even say blacky and am, am, am. See, I can't say it. <laughs> well, I used to, I used to get a kick because I used to tease my parents all the time because my name's Carl Steven and they spelled Carl with a K and Steven with a PH. I used to teach. And back when I was growing up, Carl was spelled with a C and Steven was spelled with a V because everybody was afraid of spelling yeah. stuff with German spellings because of the war. Now it's good to go back to the original German spellings. I used to tease my parents as a kid. I said, what, was Brown already written on the birth certificate so you couldn't spell that? B-R-A-U-N? <sighs> okay, can you right-click now? Sure, right-click. Create selection set. There you go. That's what I want to use? I believe so. I'm waiting. I'm waiting How for Terry to chime that? in with a yes or a no. Oh, so you're doing it with the actual bodies, not the. Yeah, the, I had to go in and oh, I had to expand everything. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm pretty sure that's it. That will work. Okay, so let me expand the rest of these first. Then. Okay, so. See, it won't let me do it in one of mine. Create selection set. It, I did it. It didn't do anything, though. Mount. I'm trying to do it, too, over here. There used to be a way to do this, dude. Didn't do it. I think they killed it for some reason. Because, like, I can't even select two different bodies from two different components anymore. And you used to be able to. Yeah. Oh, I just clicked on it. Didn't. It's not selecting those parts. Problem I'm having, and let me undo that. Oh, yes, it did. It's up top. Well, yeah, it made it, but when I click on it, it still doesn't select the parts. The problem is, though, it do that doesn't do what I need to do, unfortunately. I need The problem is I got so much stuff over here. I want to be able to group it so I've got, like, you know, like I can do the, you know, each part's got its drop down. Well, I'd like to be able to put, you know, all four of these bearings in one drop down and all four of the bearing holders in a drop down so I can condense all this to where it's not a huge i mean the only way to hide that is to do that <laughs> create selection set select update yeah you can make the selection set but that doesn't do anything yeah it didn't i mean it does you can go in if you click on the if you right click on the selection set you can say view those but it doesn't it's not the same as grouping it where you can yeah. Okay, Terry. That's but weird. if I, I tried that before, but I could only have one component active at a time so far that I've found out. If I make separate components, then it doesn't all show up. 
Yeah, it's not the same as grouping them and, and being able to just call up a group. That's kind of screwy. They yeah. used to, dude, you used to be able to group them in there. I know you can because I've done it. I never did it a lot, but back in the old days, I did it. <laughs> Will you guys be on here for a while? No, I just stopped in real quick to ask this question, to be honest. I haven't eaten dinner yet, and I need to eat something here soon. Eating dinner? Freaking 10 o'clock at night. No kidding. You know how it is? You sit, you walk down into the maker space, you start playing on the computer, and you do that at 6 o'clock. You look down at the clock, and it's like, oh, crap. It's midnight. Where'd my yeah. night go? I can't do that no more. <laughs> my life is more controlled, unfortunately. Especially now, if he's wandering, I'm in real trouble. Luckily, we we kind of foresaw this wandering thing with my father. So me and my brother have been discussing it, and I didn't realize it, but he had already ordered some motion cameras for me. I don't know if you heard that before. Did you hear me talking about my father, Carl? No, I, I just I, I literally jumped in right when you noticed me. So, um, my father wandered off today, and uh, the police and ambulance brought him home. Oh, no. He was walking down the road and fell over in his robe and slippers like a mile down the road. Oh, gosh. Wandering around. <laughs> That's never good. Nope. I mean, his, his dementia was, was been getting worse, but I didn't. And he's wandered in the house, but he always knows to stay in the house. This is the first time he just took off. What makes it even worse is my mother's, you know, my mother's down there with him. And he goes, he just looks there and goes, I'm going to go find Tom. She's like, okay, fair. And, you know, he's going to come upstairs, which is sketchy in the first place because he's not walking so well. And that's the other thing is he's not, he doesn't walk well. He falls over all the time. Just, you know, he'll take two steps and keel over for no apparent reason. And he walked, he was, he was down in the beaches. The cops found him in the beaches. Mm. <laughs> Terry's saying my problems because I don't have a master component. Oh, you know what? That might be it. I said, I the problem I have that. is, and maybe I always forget to do that too. Well, and the thing is, I started this, and maybe it's my newness to Fusion 360. This is my second attempt at making this assembly because the first one, I opened up the one part. I forget. I think it was I started off with one of these ex pieces of extrusion as my master component, and every time I would go to a set, I would say, "Okay, align this part to this part." Not the other way around. No matter which what which part I clicked first, it would take the extrusion and flip it up against the plastic, whatever part I clicked in after that. I couldn't get it to keep that from moving. Oh, it's when I said there was nothing in there, and I brought every component in. If I whatever part I click on first is the one that will move to match the part I click on second. When I had a master component, it didn't matter which I clicked on first. It was always trying to move that master component to meet the new pieces. Drove me insane. I was like, why won't this work? And then I started with nothing in it, and it works just fine. Yeah, no, what he's saying is you need to make the, the master component before you even start modeling. And he's right. Everyone's been saying that since the beginning of time, and I always forget it too. Before you do any modeling, you create a master component. Right. That, that I'm saying that's what I did. I opened then up. You start importing new components. Right, and that's, that's what I that tried doing. It isn't actually anything. The whole file is your master component. Yeah, the, the first but time I tried it. doing it, that's what I tried doing. I brought in the extrusions as my master component. You know, I, I actually opened them like they were an editable file. But every time I tried to align anything to it, it kept moving the master component, not moving the file I just added in. There is no master component to move. That's the point. Right. Be Okay. The first time I tried to create this assembly, yeah, I, got I started off, I opened up the extrusion file. So it wasn't a linked file. It was the actual file I was editing. And then I started trying to add the other pieces in. Every time I try to align a new piece to that. Correct. Magic because you imported the first one first. No. Before you do I, opened any it. I opened it as a file. It wasn't linked. I went that, in. That makes it the master component. Right. But then every You're time I try to add you anything have to, to make it, a master component before you start any modeling, before you import okay, anything. Okay, Tom, here, look. 
This is what I did. No, I don't want to save because I didn't change anything. Started a new document. I started, I started with this. Yeah. That's what I started with. Okay, boom. You already made a mistake. Stop. Okay. Go back. Delete that. Why? Go back. Delete that. Start a new start a whole new model. Okay, okay. You got a brand new model. Before you do anything, go up and start a, make a new component right now before you do anything. What's the difference you're talking Because about? that makes that the master component. Now you start importing. I know it sounds stupid and it's hard to What's the difference between this why. one and this one? It's the same thing. If I'd have named but it. it's not because now you're building into that component and you can group things into that component. So you're we're using the whole file as a master component. You need a master component before you can start building into the group. It's hard to describe, but I know why they have to do it. Before just you buy anything, yeah, just out of curiosity, you I open a file. I wish they would make it so when you open a new file, it just comes up with a with a new component. <laughs> because that's the first thing you should do, anyways. Well, it does because that's a component. Yeah, but that's not. The first item you import is your master component or design or build. That's not actually a component. That's okay. your file. Okay, so how about this? Just to, don't save. Just out of curiosity. Or I'm going to get lucky enough and drag all these pieces into. See, you didn't make a component first, though. You're already dragging them in. Back step. Go back. Well, hold on. I want to see something. I'm experimenting. New component. It's too late. The first component you build is the master component. You just made a sister-daughter component. Okay. Back out. Start a brand new document. I don't want to put all this stuff. You know how long it took me to put all these pieces? No, look at me. Like a new document. Brand new. Make a master component right now. Name it whole unit or assembly. Now drag in your assembly. Got to save it first because I tried that already. Yeah, you do have to save it. Now drag your assembly in. And everything now, you should be able to link up and work off of that. Ah. What that mass component does, basically, is, is tie everything together under it. It's not a file. It's a component. When you're doing that new assembly up on the top, that is, a, is the file, not the component. Does that make sense? No, it almost worked. You can realign all that stuff. I just want to see if you can group stuff now. Now open up that master component and see if you can group stuff under it. I don't think you can. I think the grouping has gone away. Nope. I can't see the whole menu because it's down. Oh, because I got a plot. Dumbass. Show all components. Might let me create a selection set that will be selectable, but it won't let me subgroup it. Yeah, you'll be able to. The selection set's stupid because it lets you select them all, but it doesn't even really select them all. Let me do it's something like, real quick here. It's not doing, you know, what you want is to put them all in a group so you can close the damn group up. I know exactly what you're trying to do. You're just trying to get rid of that massively long menu on the left. Yep. And there's a way to do it, dude. I know there is. Or at least there used to be. There used to be a groupable set. You used to be able to group them. Because I've done it. And it was simply right-click on it and group. 
think everything else looks like it's still in place. Let's see. Are the holes lined up? Yep. But at least, I mean, it did give me one thing, though, that I didn't have before. I can at least do this now. Yeah. But I can't sub collapsed at any, unfortunately. You know, I think you can. Try this. Open that up again. Select a couple, three things. Okay. Okay. Is there a create new group? I mean, a create new component? But that's the problem. If I create another component, it only stays, the parts only stay highlighted for the component you have selected. You can look, uh, so far I haven't found a way to select more than one component. So I, I create a new component, becomes the active component, and everything else disappears. Yeah, no, go up, go up to the assembly, create a new component up in the main menu with those still selected. Up in the main menu. Main menu, main menu up at the top. There you go. Are those still selected? Yes, you've got you've got yeah. something highlighted. The bearings, right? Great new component. From bodies, select your bodies. It won't let me do it over here. That's weird. Why won't it select you? It let you select bodies. Yeah, it's not letting me select anything in oh, here. Oh, you gotta either. select the bodies. That's why I open it up, like the three pulleys. Oh. Open it up, which is a freaking pain in the butt too. Nope. You're trying to. Uh, there's a way to do it. I just can't remember how, but it should be able to just be able to click on them and group. It makes no sense that you can't group things together and, and have them stacked. It, it makes no sense. Every freaking 3D program in the world lets you do that. Yeah. That's weird that it doesn't let you. We might have to bitch at him. I mean, I'm guessing you want to do like a group of 3D printed parts and a group of, you know, 40, 20 extrusions and a group yeah. of 20, 20 extrusions. Or even if, like I said, even if it's just, okay, here's the 3D printed parts. Here's the aluminum extrusions. Here's the bolts. Here's the, because I said, right. if, yeah. I had, if, I had all the, if I had all the metric five screws on this thing, that's a hundred and some screws. I really don't want to be scrolling through a hundred items down this sidebar here. Yeah, no, that makes no sense. Now I agree with you. Now, while I got you on here, is there any way? Okay, so you go insert item. Like, say yep. I want. That's just. I want to. I want it to where I click on insert. I want it to put it exactly where it's supposed to go right off the bat, not have to do like three clicks to align it into the hole it's supposed to go into. Nope, you got to do the three clicks. Ah, oh. there, there's. I shouldn't say that. Um, I can't remember how. See, you're doing stuff way above. I've never done that much assembly stuff. Yeah, exactly. Know, I, always, I always model each individual item as a as a complete file. Yeah, I like for me to do this, stuff. I would have to go in and go uh, bolts and screws. See, I never import trick. It was on head screws. I want metric five by eight millimeter. There you go, hex round drive. Stainless steel. Yeah. That that and to think, though, two weeks ago, I didn't know Fusion 360. 
Yeah. Yeah. I I hate importing from them because I hate step files and fusion. I know everyone seems to love them, but well, I wish they had a fusion option, but they don't. So I got I that usually, little, I I got usually will model them myself because I prefer it. And then it's it's you know a fusion file, not a step file. Ah. You can model your own screw and just import it from then on. It's not hard to model a screw. It's rather easy in Fusion. Well, what I've been doing is usually what I'll do is I'll open up just a file and I'll import this. And then I'll save it over in the side menu like I did it with the bearings. McMaster actually doesn't sell the bearing I use on this thing. They don't sell a 6202 2RS half inch version. They sell a 15 millimeter version. Well, I pulled their 15 millimeter version in and I edited it in Fusion and made it to where it was a 12.7 inner diameter. And saved it as a file over here in the models. You know, I think that capture position or something down there at the bottom. What's the other one that says there? What's Bring that? that oh, too late. Yeah, damn it. Too late. It won't. I, I can't go back to the screen. Up the there. Area. What's I, that? I don't remember. I think that if you select an area before you import, you can align it to that hole, but I'm not positive. Well, now here's what's interesting, though. I don't do that a lot. I've never done this heavy of a, you know, I don't do assemblies in Fusion. It put I that new bolt. Model and save them as individual files. It didn't put the bolt in the assembly. It put the bolt out here by itself. Why would you go to rid it? Go right to Fusion and get go right to the people that deal with the program. Yeah, all you gotta do is put on at Ask Fusion 360 on Twitter and someone will. Yeah. Or go on right in. The best thing to do, dude, like those, like that grouping thing, go right to Autodesk into their forms, into the Fusion forms. Because not only is are you getting, you know, real people, but they watch their own forums. Most of the guys answering are from them. <laughs> And if they see something asked a lot, they will fix it. Yeah, I think they are on Reddit too, but still, why why go to Reddit when I hate Reddit? I don't know why everyone likes that. I find Reddit obnoxious. See, I don't understand why it just did what it did there. I don't either. Why wouldn't it align? Oh, it I know why. Damn it, I hate that. I keep forgetting. So I gotta go. Align that face with that circle. Nope, because I have it all set when I did it. Cancel. Yeah. I'm still getting a knack of where you got to click. You click that face and then you do the other face, don't you? No, if you do the face, it just aligns it on that plane. But if I do this, see, I have to click the center center. To get it to go. I haven't figured out how to get it to go center and flush to the plane I want. Damn it. Keep losing my spot here. So I got to go. That. Yeah, because then you get the center mark there. And then. That one. That yeah, one. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I got to do that a hundred and some times. <laughs> I said, I'll definitely save the screw off in the side file here as a component. I'll say, you know, I'll, I'll well, do I'll open up a separate thing and save the let, screw. Let, let me ask you something. Why even bother putting those in? Just because everybody's asked. And supposedly, I, and I haven't figured out yet, I've been told there's a way. That you can, that's why I want to group it. Because I've been told there's a way you can put all the screws to where they're on this left hand menu. And if you want to know how many screws it is, you can, you're supposed to, be able to click on that subgroup and something it'll tell you how many of that yeah. object are in yeah, there. There it is. Dude, you, for one, you have to go to the new, for, the new layout because you are missing shit in that layout. So the thing I noticed though is I put that new thing in here. It didn't put it under the assembly. It put it out here by itself under the master. Yeah. 
Because you definitely have to start using the, lay the new layout. Because the old layout, m there's stuff missing now in the old layout, stuff that's been added that you're not getting functionality of. And I can't and move it. that much different. Nope, it won't let me move it to the... I can't put that one under this assembly. It's going to keep... Unfortunately, the only thing I gained by putting it under this master right now is the ability to do that. But every component I add from here on out is going to be out by itself again. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, as I add all the screws, it's going to add them all separately down here like this. It's not going to put them under this assembly, so I'll end up with a whole other stack. I mean, great. Well, you open the assembly, if you open the assembly, drop down the menu, and then add them, it will go into the assembly. I did. It was down when I added that. Yeah, but it's select the assembly. Don't open it. Select it. See, you don't have it selected. See the little black dot up there where it says whatever? I can't read it because the screen's too damn small. The only thing bad about this thing there's is no, There's no black dot. Yes, there is. I can see it right above that. Right there. That's yeah. accurate. But now you got to turn that black dot onto the item you're you're working on. Close that assembly back up. Why is there no black dot there? I could put a black dot on that. Oh, because it's the only a linked file. It won't, it it won't let you import it into a linked file because that's changing the linked file. You can collect that, put the black dot on there, and then anything you import will be into that drop down. But all I have is the screw. Yeah, they're all there. They're just highlighted. They're all dimmed. But how do I get this to go into here? You have to have that. I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> You're doing stuff I never did with this. Like I said, I don't build yeah. big assemblies like that with this. I just make into each individual part and then go from there. I never try and do the assemblies. I'll save this. I'm not sure if I'll, I think I'll keep building on the other one because then all I'd have to do is. Literally right click and it would update this one so we figure out. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Dude, this stuff's really good. I'm trying to figure out who snuck into my makerspace. Why? Who snuck into your makerspace? I don't know. I came in here yesterday morning and my other chair. I was like, it had rained a lot, so I kind of walked into the basement cautious, make sure water didn't get in anywhere, and I see this puddle underneath my other chair. I'm like, okay. I moved the chair, thinking water had got up. I go to wipe it up, and I realize, no, it's something sticky. I look at the chair, and something was spilt sticky all over the top of the chair and onto the floor. I haven't spilt anything. Check this out, huh? little ice bucket for my little soda. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I would go to Autodesk Forms and show because the other thing about Autodesk Forms is you can use their little video thing, yeah, and show them what you're trying to do, and they will tell you exactly how to do it within minutes. I mean, it literally takes minutes for one of those guys to respond there. Yeah, I may message that guy Dennis that helped me the one night. The guy that Tinker suggested, he seemed like a fusion guru. Yeah. Maybe he maybe, a good idea. Know a maybe know he'll, he'll know a trick or something. 
I'm, I'm just afraid that no matter what happens, they're going to turn around and they're going to tell me, well, yes, you can do all that, but first you need to create a new document like this, and then I'll have to start from total scratch again, and I'll cry. You, you may have to. <laughs> I'm and gonna if that's, have to go to if that's the room. case, then I'll be like, you know what? I'll be like, yeah, I don't need to do it that bad. The only reason I, the only reason exactly. I could think to do it again would be if someone said yes. If you create from scratch, then yes, you can group all your screws. You got to right click here, and it'll tell you yes. You put 133 screws. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, dude. That's above and beyond me. Like I said, I don't do that kind of thing generally. See, I thought maybe if I just highlight and select it, it would tell me how many it, items are selected. It only tells me multiple selections. It doesn't even. Well, see, again, you're in the old interface. If you go to the new interface. And how do I do that? You go up into preferences and go kick on new interface. <laughs> You'll have to restart Fusion. Up in the left-hand corner, preferences. Okay. Uh, where's the graphics or UI or API or something? The problem is I can't read it because it's so small on the screen. General, API, design, render, manufacture. Oh, it's probably in the graphics or something. Graphics. Where the hell is it? Default Where's units, it? no, design, preview. How about this? Changes the default UI to a tabbed experience. Includes new terminology and visual treatment to try this preview. Yep, there you go. Okay. UI preview. Apply. Yep, you're going to have to restart. It's going to freak you out, though, because everything's going to change. <laughs> I hope I can. It's not that much that, different. Right? It just takes a few minutes to get used to. Well, hopefully it doesn't make it too hard for me to find everything again. I just now learned where everything's at in the menu. Yeah, well, it's going to be a little different. Not a lot different, but a little different. Like when you're sketching, all the solid stuff is now in its own little menu. You have to actually go over solids, which I find annoying, but whatever. <laughs> We'll see. Do something real quick here. Twitter search. Hey, you told me. I am really pissed that I did not get any Jared freaking red filament from Hoda Pasta. Neither did I. I asked. I, I was broke when they came out with it. I asked Tinkers to hold five rolls for me. You know, have them do five extra, put them on like layaway for me. Anything. I did the whole. I went when they first did it. And they said, "Oh, you got to go in here and select it and do it." I swear, I did everything. Huh. But well, I never got charged. It's not like I got charged and they didn't send it because I actually yeah. looked. Check. My, I mean, I I I won't because for there are several reasons why, but. I was told Matter Hackers had 15 rolls in stock the last time I asked about it. If you really want it, you could get it from them. It's really not that big a deal because I can't afford it right now. So I just really, really like that collar. Okay, so let's see. See how it looks now? You have solid surface sheet metal and tools now instead of whatever it was. <laughs> it's not really all that different. You all hear my jaw clicking? <laughs> so, extrude... Revolve. There's my whole tool. 
all that stuff's pretty much the same. It's just like now when you go to extrude something, you know, if you go in like start just start a, a sketch. Well, uh, let, let me look around a minute. Yeah, it hasn't changed that much where you are now. They won't let me add new stuff. Yeah, it pinned it up there. You just have to stretch the window out. You got too many items up there. Oh. Put your whole window up wider. Okay. I get rid of the sidebar. It's there. Okay. Yeah. You can't open your window wider? No. Like your screen. Screen. Okay, so... Okay, so what's the difference between solid and surface for an extrude? Nothing. No okay. Extrusion. Actually, I shouldn't say that. There is. When you're in surface and you extrude, normally when you're in solid, you extrude something, you mm -hmm. extrude a solid box. Okay. When you extrude in surface, you get the four-sided box. You do not get a six-sided box. Get what I'm saying? You extrude the sides. You don't extrude the top and bottom. Okay. Okay, Terry's back. You said, okay, Carl, go back. I remember to correctly. Again, I don't use surface and all that much. Okay, Terry, so the one we made or the very original one? What's that? Terry just came back in. He said, okay, go back to your main assembly you were working on. I'm like, okay, this one that we made that Tom suggested or the first one I was working on? Okay. Hey, Terry, in. I sent the here. You went the link? I think I still have it. Me and me. Yep, that's it. Jump in, Terry. If you're home on your computer. Or even if you're not. Okay. I'm here. Maybe he's camera shy. No, he's been out here before. <laughs> he just got to get to his little crappy laptop. I don't think he's got a camera on his regular computer. The very top. So you're talking here where it says assembly V18? Yep. Right click on that, he says. Create new component. Okay. How do I put this stuff in? Okay, I'll let him continue. Now what? Yeah, you need creating component. Bearings. Okay. How's it going, Jason? Okay. Over the bearing component that you just created. And so I just tried doing. Or you were over the origins. Right there. That's where I let go of it. Ah, that time it moved. There you go. Okay, now how do I get everything to look the same, though? 
Because now it's all this funky, black-looking, shaded. Go back up to the very top and turn the very top component with the little black dot. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bearings. Okay, so now let's see here. New component. Shoot. Might not be able to do what I wanted. What did you want to do? No, I, I think I brought in the whole cross brace assembly as one assembly. Instead of the individual extrusion pieces, I may have screwed myself there. Yeah, that's kind of what he wanted. Yeah, that is. Thanks, Terry. That's, that's kind of a weird way to do it. I don't know why I don't just let you create a group. But that still lets me better than nothing. Let's see here now. So create a new component. Whoops. I already did that apparently. I knew there was a way, but I can swear you used to be able to just group them together before. Which I'm sorry, still makes more sense. Yeah, like this looks at least then when I do my hundred and some screws, I can put them all on a component that says screws. Yeah. What's up, Chris? See, I, I made the mistake of bringing that all in as one whole assembly. Oh, you, you probably can't see it. Too yeah, smart. Right. I brought in this whole bracing section down here at the bottom. It's all one piece, unfortunately. So open the thing up and drag them into that as separates. It's linked, so it's still a linked file, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So if I split it up, it won't care? It won't let you split it up because it's linked. Yeah. Oh, I see. You want to like... Yeah, I got you. I think you can do it. I don't, I don't know. I wonder if I can grab all these and put them like if I wanted like if I wanted to change up do 3D you know right now I did all those separate that were like four of a kinds but if I want to do 3D printed parts I wonder if I could select these and pull them out of that and into something else let's see or uh, I don't know well, we'll find out here in just a second I don't gonna let you do anything to the link item because the item's linked. <laughs> you could break the link, but then that's probably what's gonna tell me here in just a second. It may say this will break link, but we'll see. Well, it, yeah, it opened. It didn't move them though. 
it won't move them because they're linked to another piece. He's saying, let him in. He's he must be waiting in the green room. Oh, there he is. I wasn't I was watching you. I wasn't watching him. Sorry about that. Hey. There he is. Hey Terry. He's theoretically hey, true. Yeah, I've been trying to get on. Just trying to get the kids to bed first. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mr. Theory Deluxe. Yeah, Theory Deluxe. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah, you even spelled it that way. <laughs> Yeah, I like yeah. theoretically too. Better. So what I what I suggest you do, Carl, is um, start it all over. No, I don't <laughs> think you have. To. I, think, I don't think you have to. But like ideally, when you would have started, you would have started with a master assembly, and you know, put like white knight, and then yeah. and then gone from there. But you can you can still sort of do that. Uh, like what? What's your very top thing called? I I can't really make it. Oh, I just uh, I had a thought. Let me. Okay, so just says assembly eighteen. That's what it's. That's what your main assembly is called. That I didn't. I said I didn't have a main part. I said when I when I created this, there was nothing in this window. I saved a blank page. Okay, so that says assembly eighteen. So click on that and rename it White Knight. Or whatever, whatever you want to call your. Not letting me. Uh, try right clicking on it. Yeah, it's not letting me change it now. Why is it not letting you change the name? That's weird. Oh, oh, I got the that. Back component. Nope. Uh, you should maybe just slow click on, like click on it once, like so it's highlighted, and then just click once and just wait a sec. Hmm. Well, that's sort of irrelevant, I guess, right now. But um, so what I would do now is I'd start. I'd create your components, uh, or create a component category for each part of your printer, and then drag whatever, just kind of like what you're doing. But then you can you can go even further and and sub component those. So like. You have a component called bearings now, and all of the bearings are in there. But you could create a subcomponent saying, whatever, bearings for uh, y axis or whatever. I got you. So you can do like y axis bearings or x axis yeah. bearings. Or like you could break it down. And then that selection group thing that, that I told you when I was just chatting earlier, mm -hmm. um, that's a really powerful tool too. So um it's not what you wanted in this case but um it sure makes it nice if you're you you can use that selection tool for uh uh i don't know if you want to hide them all or or whatever it's just it's a lot nicer if you've got like 200 parts or 200 components or whatever you can right click say select all and then hit like the control h or whatever it is that hides them all or whatever okay. it's, it's a lot faster going to, to your selection sets if you're if you find yourself selecting the same things over and over again mm -hmm. but it's it's one of those things you might like you won't use day to day when you're just designing stuff but it's definitely nice setting them up and then you've got them and you get used to them it it saves you it saves you lots of time here and there. So okay, I'm really good at general modeling in Fusion. This whole assembly stuff, I just I've never used it. Yeah, I don't felt the need to. I probably should have when I broke. I mean, this helps me out though because I was I was getting to the point where I'm like, okay, I've got to constantly scroll over here. I'm like, yeah, I, I was going, man, I add a hundred and some screws and a hundred and some T nuts. It's going to be the infinite scroll from hell. Yeah, yeah. This way, I can create a subfolder now that'll be, you know, screws and you know, subfolder says T nuts, and then said hopefully there's some way I can click on it and do, you know, even if it's a shift select and it'll tell me so. Hopefully, some there's some way I can click and say, okay, yeah, there is a hundred M5 screws. 
Okay, so if you were to import an M5 screw right now and put it somewhere, how would you do that? Okay, let me do this then. So, assembly. I it first and then I didn't put it. New component. <laughs> and but how are you? How are you assembling it? Um, like all your parts right now, how are they attached? Or you just drag and drop them sort of to about where you want them? I'm aligning them. You're aligning them. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Like using like, using so, the assembly tool? So, yeah. Okay. So I go insert. We'll go ahead and pull that screw in again now. I got to. Yes, he's making a mini white peasant. It's not a white knight. It's a white peasant. It's a squire. It's a white peasant. Oh, sorry. That's the squire. I kept calling it the white knight. I said I was going to say it looks small, but... Yeah, it's a mini version. Tiny little one. It's a peasant. Like I said, so, no, every knight needs a squire. Uh, so have you been designing the squire uh, in Fusion then from scratch, or... Well, uh, 3D Gusser and, and I said, I wish I could remember everybody's name. And a bunch of other people chipped in and took all my STLs and converted them to Fusion 360 files. Okay. I'm going through now because everybody's like, when are you going to post? When are you going to post? Well, I'm going through and I'm kind of checking sizes yeah. while I'm creating the, uh, the Squire because I need to get the Squire done for Earth. And then once I've got the Squire set up, I'm going to go back and take all the changes that I made and incorporate them into the original files. Okay. And I'll... I'm 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 kind of as I find mistakes, I'm going in and I'm fixing the originals and putting it into the white knight folder. I'm gonna get through all those files and then I'll upload them and I'll actually probably convert them all to STL and replace all my STLs that are out there because yeah. they're they're so I'm sure there's gotta be holes and errors and stuff in them because 3D Builder, well, it just sucks at that. Yeah. I was um you ever look watch that uh Lars uh Lars I, I've tried yeah. to watch his stuff, but the problem is I'm in such a rush to get this done before Earth. Yeah. Wait, I want to sit and take 20 minutes to learn this feature and 20 minutes to learn that. I got like halfway through his how yeah. to build a conduit box and figured out enough to be dangerous. And I haven't yeah. been back to it since. So um, well, what I was going to say about him is is he, he hates STL files. He's... Uh, like he's, I th he works for Autodesk. He does the his videos are just for like personal whatever. But he's he's uh, he's had quite a few videos talking about the difference between STL and dot obj. Mm -hmm. And he's a huge fan of dot obj, which I think a lot of splicers can use too. But it's like a, I don't know. I don't know enough about them. I still do everything in STL, but I think you lose. You lose more with STL. I'm waiting for someone to figure out how to just slice straight from like a step or a Fusion 360 file so you could just skip the whole thing. I mean, because like there's my daughter and I <laughs> right out of Fusion. For, a set of, for a set of like angel wings. That it's out on uh, my mini hub, my mini factory. Yeah. And my daughter wants to make it. Well, I'm looking and they used a couple of chrome steel rods and some igas bearings and everything to run up and down. I'm going, that's nice, but those chrome rods, they got a whale out. I'm like, why not use a piece of 2040 extrusion and some rollers like a CR-10 or like my D-Bot uses to run yeah. up the side of it instead of using those steel rods. I said, it should be, I'm thinking it'd be lighter. Well, I asked them if I could, you know, I said, hey, if I pay the $12 for your models, can I get the Fusion files too? Because it says yeah. it was modeled in Fusion. They haven't answered me yet. I'm like, I understand I get why some people don't like to share the fusion because then it's way too easy to manip manipulate someone's model. But at the same time, if you're selling it, who cares? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I can see the I can see the reasoning. I guess like your fusion file, you can see you can see the history. You can see everything. Like if you well, export it as a step file, at least then you could still modify it like you're after, but you wouldn't have yeah. Like, the and I'd be fine. I'd be fine with that. 
yeah. I'd be fine with step because then I could at least bring it in without you know it being mesh and yeah. make changes yeah, I want to make to it. That's something I wish I was better at. Like I, I, I don't use Tinkercad for anything except for bringing in STL files and modifying them because I don't know how to do it in in Fusion. Like I, I, I know you have to import it and then you have to convert it to BRAP. But in order to convert it to BRAP, it can only have so many triangles. And I, and every time I lower the triangle count, I lose like all definition of what the STL file was. Like you lose all your, all your detail. And, and I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. Like I'm sure there's a better way of doing it. But um, I find that that's what Tinkercad's good for. But if, yeah, if you had access to the step files, then at least you can. You can start building on it. It comes into Fusion as a body, instead of as a mesh. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is how I'm. All, this is how I'm aligning all the parts. Yeah. Okay. And then. And that would be my one screw. Right. Which now I'd have to take and drop into that menu. So why not use the assembly instead of align? I don't know. That's because I learned how to use a line. <laughs> so pretty much when you go through and you monkey your way through after watching Lars's stuff, you know, like he said, you learn just enough to be dangerous. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I actually figured, figured out the line like command it. on my own. I was like, I just started, I got the point where I'm like, okay, I'm, I learned how to make an object. Once I learned how to make an object, I just started playing with function. I'm like, well, what does this do? And I found out that, oh, a line will let me line a face and do this. Yeah. Like, what drag, do I uh, hit hit M on your keyboard and then click that screw. So M, M is move. Right. I figured that out a long time ago. And that's how okay. I make my copies of stuff. I'll get create copy and drag it. Like that screw, I'd import it once. What I do now is I just click, keep doing M and click create copy and make another. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like the, the align tool, you or sorry the assemble tool i think is probably more along the lines of something like what you're building it's probably most suited towards an assembly okay tool i get you know what i mean like you're actually building an assembly um aligning it i i think and i'm no expert but i think like it makes it look good on the screen it's lined up and everything but it's not locked into place or anything Right, so, so you're, 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 you're going to be able to move it. You know, you're not yeah, going to make it where you can move things in your model. Yeah, like you should be able to grab if everything is assembled. So mm -hmm. that means, like, you would have that screw. You could say, okay, so center, center of the screw is center of, uh, like, your printed part, and your flush part is locked to this portion of of the printed part and but offset by 0.2 millimeters or whatever it is and then now if you were to grab the entire assembly and move a portion of it no matter what that screw is going to stay um with that part because it's been assembled to go there like okay until you, until you remove that um that joint i guess so everything well not everything but there's a lot if you look at the assembly menu everything is a joint or a lot of stuff is joints. There's rigid joints. There's joints that move. Um, like, ideally, when you're done all of your modeling, you'll be able to take like that roller, and and move it. Like well, turn it. Yeah. Like and when when you turn it, you'll have a belt on it, and because that belt has an assembly joint, it will turn at the same rate. And all the the bearings that you have, mm -hmm. anything that's touching that belt that you're turning will also turn. And okay. You know what I mean? like, well, like, because the whole point of this, like right here, maybe you could show me real quick. I don't know, maybe. But like this roller, that's a rigid group, which is why it wouldn't let me, like when I hit this and tried to hit M, yeah. it's not letting, it's not giving me the arrows because I can't because it's a rigid group with the rest of it. I'd actually have to go in here and click on this. Yeah. And I can hit move and move it because it's a rigid group. Right. Now, these mounts here, 
the bearing mount and the bearing okay. that's all meant to slide with this roller in and back and forth on that c channel okay so how can I make that an assembly that slides in that C channel that I could grab it and move it back and forth? Okay, so you'd have to go you'd have to go to assembly and then you would have to make a oh you'd have to make a motion joint. Hmm. Let me look on mine here. Motion link. Assemble you wanna do a uh joint and then you want a revolute joint there's that you see that pin slot joint the which okay so uh, let me go back to the screen here okay so click uh, joint joint okay and then um, there'll be a drop down menu okay and yeah now you see pins yeah, right there. I believe that that's the one that you want there. Um, uh, yeah, so then you now you select your components. So uh, you want that, the bearing, or I guess the center of the bearing. You want it to move uh, inside that slot. It, that it, won't let, it won't let me select the whole... I gotta, okay, I gotta select all these pieces again. It won't let me select the rigid group. Yeah, so it's because, okay, you did that, you did a rigid group through assembly. Is that I, did a, uh, I did a rigid group through like, I selected everything and right clicked it and the only thing it gave me, is I was looking to just be able to group it so when I'm, like when I was aligning the roller to go for in the bearing, it kept moving just the rod and not the whole roller assembly. So I had to make it a rigid group so it would move all of that. Okay. Yeah, so a rigid group, I'm just reading here, rigid group, says it locks the relative positions of the selected components. The components are treated as a single object when moved or when joints are applied. So that should be no problem. Like, if you want all of that to stay together and move in that slot, all of those things together, then now you should only need to make a single joint. Um, like I said, like that pin slot, I think, is the one that you want. Um you should be able to select any one of those components and the slot that they're moving in. And that should create that joint. I'm not explaining it very well, I don't think. So select that. Yeah, select that. Well, it's not letting me select the, the center pin then because it's... Well, it's a rigid group, so it, it shouldn't matter which, what you're selecting there anymore. Because that whole thing is going to move, right? Well, no, I'm trying to select where it's going to line up to the other you know the center hole with the bearing oh okay yeah sure not letting me get to that hole you use the light bulb yeah. to go ahead and turn off that piece so you can't see it and then you'll be able to get inside there yeah there actually go. if you click and hold if you click down and keep your mouse click down you should be able to select which one as well okay wow that was interesting and then just hit that is the second one, but it's not. It's not letting me click OK. So you need to select a second thing. I ha like okay. It didn't, it, okay, so it didn't like my selection on that bearing. Uh, it wouldn't let you select it. So okay, so what is it sliding in? Well, okay. You see what I mean? Like you, so you okay. select. Okay, the roller would roll in the bearing. This piece slides in this piece. Okay, so you don't actually want... So, okay, my mistake. So go... Uh, I can't see. I don't have this blown up. Well, I, still ha I guess I still have to technically connect the roller assembly to the bearing and the bearing yeah. to the... No, because you already have that as a rigid group, right? This is a rigid group, but the bearing's not part of the rigid group, nor is the the block. Okay, so all you want to do, though, ideally the block is... All this that's selected right now is the rigid group. Yeah, I see it. Okay, so you want... But the block is what slides, right? Right. Okay, so let's just make that slide. Okay, so go okay. to assembly. Create joint. Okay. 
and then you want uh, no so yeah click on that and then you want uh, slider okay. now click your click your this, yeah that and the other the like the rail I guess it's not I can't get it off so of you, have to, you have to click on component two now ah Oh great! Any any piece on there? I guess it doesn't matter. It, it should, yeah, yeah it should be any piece. Two in the main in the little menu on the right. There you go. Go over to your bodies and select the whole body. Go over to your left menu and select the whole body. It's just your component two there. It's not going to let him do it like that. He's going to select the whole body. He's just selecting a face, and it's not going to let him select a face. Just X that out. No, it's not letting me. You got to get to the body. There you go. I was in the body. <laughs> body 1 won't let me select it. Body 18 won't let me select it. Um, can Let's you hide that slider? Uh, hide the slider. Okay, so now can you click on that rail in behind there? Still not letting me select okay. Hmm. Uh, it could. Mm. The first component that you have selected, though, is that just the outside of the piece that's sliding, or is that the whole body for the piece that's sliding? That's the whole body. Yeah, like I've used, I've used exactly that same thing. Like I'm building a, a drill press. Well, maybe uh, it's not. No, it's just that face. Okay. So I sort of uh, watched it. But it won't let me select the body. You got to um, delete the one you have there already. You already have a component selected. Now go over to your body. Select the body. You got to open it up, drop it down to get to the body. Okay, hang on. Hang on one sec, Carl. Hit, hit cancel there for a sec. Flip it so we can see the bottom of that uh, extrusion there. Okay, now go to um, inspect. And click uh, uh, cross-sectional analysis. Click the bottom of the rail. And then slide that arrow up until you're halfway up. Okay, right there. Hit OK. Okay, now go back to joint. Climb behind everything. <laughs> uh, okay, now, now kind of... Uh, Move your view so that you're looking straight down on that. Oh. And zoom in on that. And then try selecting just the edges of the parts that you want to slide there now. If you can zoom in a little more, then I can see it better, but... So you should be able to click just the two edges there now. Select component one edge, yeah, and then select the component two. The heck! I can't get it to. I can't get it to show me that edge of the extrusion. Hmm. Well, let me turn off the. There we go. Nope, wrong one. I think you had it there once, it looked like, but. Boom. Oh, okay, there you go. 
Yeah, so now it's showing you it's showing you how it moves here now. I'm, yeah, but look I'm, what it did to everything. Which gives you in section analysis. It hacked it because of the section analysis. No, yeah, it's so cool. spun, now you can, it spun the extrusion 90 degrees. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so slide it back now with that arrow. Okay, so so what you've got is you've got the Try flipping that. Um, hit, click on flip. You had something screwed up there, Carl. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, no, it's okay. Where you have that joint in the joint. Yeah, hit flip there. Yeah, it's not. Okay, so flip. How You have component one and two there. Uh, change the... Um, uh, change the order there, maybe. Like select the other one first, or that rail first, and now click the the other. And that sectional analysis, if you want to, you have to, yeah, yeah. Um, that sectional analysis, no. you can turn that off or delete at any time. I don't know what this is not. I got the two faces that are touching each other selected, and it's still not giving me the okay. I don't know what I did different. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. You guys do know that Terry can go on, and you can give him a link to this file, and you guys can work on it side by side live. Uh, I know. Inside Fusion. Tom, one piece is one thing. The whole thing, that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. yeah I've, I've been no, looking no, no, offense to, no offense to Terry, but... I've, I've been looking for a printer I can sell. <laughs> I don't think Terry would uh, give you a problem. Uh, I'm just saying, you know. No, I know. No, I said no. nothing against Terry. I said, like I said, sharing one file with you to play with that one night's one thing. Almost the entire assembly until it's posted. That's a totally different story. Well, Granted, I mean, it's all variants of, I mean, this is all a variant of the White Knight anyway, so technically it's still open source, but. Um. I wouldn't want that responsibility anyways. <laughs> well, the point is you go in and, and point and click and point and click and show him exactly what to do. It yeah. Would be live. You could actually work on that file with him live. Um, Not through us. Like, it wouldn't, like, it wouldn't uh, go to the stream labs. Hang on a second here. Let me load up my, my um, model here. Hang on. I don't do – I've never done any of the assembly stuff. I dabbled with it way back when I first started playing with Fusion, but I never needed it. I, I never did anything this, you know, heavily built. You, you know I, what, Terry? My, my printer is all built in Fusion. Can you uh, can you share my screen, or do I have to do that, or what? You have to do that. Just go down to the bottom where it says Share Screen, and then he'll just flip between mine and yours. Yep. You guys, I got to get out of here in about ten minutes. Just. So I, I was going to say I was supposed to go eat an hour ago. And I jumped I was, on with you. I just want to show you, like, what my thing looks like, like where where I've got some joints and stuff, because I I I know it'll work for you. Like I and I said like, I'm not, I'm no expert. I don't know why. Actually, Rick, um, you play with Fusion a lot, don't you? I don't do anything with assembly either. I wanted yeah, to get into it. I just haven't got there yet. Oh, because like, I mean, I, I, I want to learn how to get all the motions right. Because at some point, you know, I do want to do a video showing the X and Y axis doing like a little circle or something in here just to see it all moving. But, and of course, I mean, I'm dreading the thought of creating the, the GT two belt and stringing it all through here. I'm like, yeah, I don't even know if I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay. Can you can see this here now? Yep. They can. Well, not yet. It's still, okay. There we go. Um, so oh, like God. I've got, so, um, Uh, um, uh, <laughs> been there, done that. I was gonna say, maybe it's the biker with me, but I see chopper forks. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, it's it, yeah. bad. I kind of do too. I see them more as mountain bike forks, but sure. I, I see the first drill press I ever owned. You add a strap to that, and you could strap your regular old drill to it. And well, that's, yeah, that's exactly I had one of those too. <laughs> Um, we actually, you, those are actually pretty good. I had a lot of those at, on job sites because they're light and small and cheap. We used to get the plastic slider ones for that. I'm looking for my uh, 
Uh, actually, Rick, I made the White Knight. This is just a smaller version of it. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, I like the idea of smaller. It'll actually fit right on my desk. It, this one here, if it give, I mean, to give you a size idea, the uh, on the original one, the roller, the, it was a 400 for the belt. This one's only going to be 230 on the belt. I am putting a little more space to the side here because I noticed in mine there really wasn't much room to get the print head over over top of the drip tray. And I want to try and do multicolor too. And to do multicolor with a palette on a belt printer, you're going to have to use the uh, off print purge. I'm going to have to make like a purge tube to hang over here. That the So you tell it every time it wants to change, go to this location yeah. and then it'll purge down a tube and then go back and continue. You can't do a purge block with a belt printer. At least no way that we've been able to figure out. I mean, we talked about it. You'd have to start the purge block way before any of the print because you'd have to have a block big enough to do your purge on before you could even start the print. So that you're wasting even more filament than everybody else does. Right. The smarter, less, uh, the smarter more efficient way would just be make an off-site purge and purge into a tube and let it feed and have the tube hovering right over top of a trash can. Here, here's a, here's a theory for you, dude. Have yeah. it purge into a tube that's 1.7 millimeters wide. So as it keeps purging into it, it makes you a new multicolored piece of filament. <laughs> but, I, but I have to be running a 1.75 nozzle. No, it'll squirt into the tube and fill the nozzle. It'll just keep filling it because it's going to harden in the nozzle. But if you use like PDFE where it squirts into it, it'll fill it up to a point and then it'll just start pushing it down. I think it'll work, man. Maybe. I'd be afraid it would fall up cool. in it. I mean, talk about recycling your, your, you know, everyone's like, oh, the perk blocks of waste. If you could make it, make filament as it's doing it, granted, it wouldn't be perfect. I'm sure there'd be little air bubbles and crap in it, but. I'm still trying to find. I, I so can't. Here's, here's, uh, that. So here's kind of what I'm I'm talking about here. Carl. Okay. So, like, I've got I've got. I don't know if you can how much of that you can see. I can see it. Um, we can see it rotate. We can't see why. Well, I've got I've got that gear at the back. Um, it's doing. That's on a uh, uh, a revolution joint, and mm -hmm. then I've got. Um, th these these conduits here are on a slider joint, and then I've made a motion link between the two of them, and I've done something here since I worked on this that is not like I can I can have this play, and I don't know why it's not right now, but um, this will spin and this will go up and down, and I can set limits to how far up and down it'll go. Like it'll only go so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think like, you don't need to do this right away, but, but my assembly here, if I move, like if I, if I was to slide this up, if it wasn't locked here right now, I got to look at it here again, but if I was to slide this, com this component up, I don't know if you can see my mouse, yeah. um, because I've got all these other gear or like the gear and everything are locked to that. If I'm, if I slide this in the upwards direction, it's going to turn that gear which is going to turn that shaft and then if like eventually I'll put the in like the inside of the bearing I'll have it turn there as well um, but then you can really show uh, you know show how the parts are interacting and and everything I guess okay um, like so same eventually I'll have this so when it's sliding up and down I'll have these bearings um, they'll have a rotational uh, or a revolution joint, I guess, on on these bolts. Um, but there'll be there'll be a motion link between them and this pipe. So when this pipe moves up and down, these will move in ac according to how fast and how far these uh, pipes are moving. I guess. Okay. So, like I, I know that's probably not super important to you right now, but setting up these rigid joints. Um, it's kind of like the start of that, I guess. Like I've got these, these uh, bearings are, are, they're rigidly joined in there. They're not just aligned. They're like, yeah. 
Like, I can't move them around, I guess. But Okay. So, I don't know. I, yeah. uh, I sort of think that's kind of what you're doing. But Yeah. Or, I've had lots of people. The reason I started putting this together was, one, I'm like, okay, everybody keeps telling me that would have been so much easier had I designed the entire printer first and then got my measurements. I built the White Knight on the fly. It's like, okay, I said, well, I'm going to make these. Yeah. I created the end caps and I put the end caps on. I said, okay, well, this will fit in this box. And I said, okay, I'm going to design everything from there. Cause I had the box. So like it would be really cool if I could drop this down in. So I made yeah. sure everything else I developed didn't go past this with the exception of the screen. I was like, and I've since I got to print the latest version. Cause this one didn't go quite far enough, but I made myself a hinge. So I'll be able to take this. And in the end goal, I'll be just going to flip it up like this so it'll drop down in without having to unbolt the screen. And then, yeah. So it's like, like all that stuff is, um, I don't know. It, for you, probably it's a lot easier just building it and looking at it and then pull, pulling it into design design later on. Um, I don't know. It, everybody kind of works differently, I guess. But it's worth having those. I think it's worth putting those joints in so you can show built right into your CAD drawing that all of that stuff can do that, I guess. Yeah. That sort of makes sense. It helps with assembly. It helps with all that stuff, I think. See, but, and, and you're, you're going to laugh at me for this, but I was like, I'm sitting there okay, if I get all the pieces put in the right spot, if I post this out to the GitHub, I, I know there's a whole bunch of my subscribers and followers that are just dying for me to put this all out in Fusion anyway. I'm sure someone will turn on and go, dude, you you, you need to, to set all your motions and everything and make it to where yeah. it all moves. And they'll go, I'll do that for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, yeah sure. and then I'll be like, yeah, but I didn't learn anything. But at the same point, I'm like, uh, you know, when you think about I said, I, I tell you, it's like, you know, I did this, you know, so I've done all this. I, I started messing with Fusion, what, two weeks ago, Tom? Oh, Probably. it's been longer than that. Three, maybe yeah, three, a month you've been playing with it. But, you know, I'm like, I created all these five, you know, the other stuff was already done. These yeah. five pieces here, I did all that on my own. You can't see that anymore, Carl. Oh, sorry. We're in the four window thing. Here you go. Yeah. Like they, all these, all the pieces here in the cross brace. This is okay. I figured out how to do all this on my own and I'm building the, my own parts now. It's like, yeah. okay. Like you have like the those joints and all that kind of stuff that all just sort of makes it look pretty, I guess. Like I don't know, I what you're doing aligning them and everything doesn't prevent you from adding the joints later on. Yeah, too, you know. And it's like if that's what you know, they're lined up. They're sort of where they need to be, anyways. To add the rigid joints later on is is a piece of cake. Like it's. I, I think right. eventually when when you're getting kind of close to the end there, you, you'll probably want to like learn how that stuff works maybe, but I yeah. don't know. It's like, like I, that's I, probably not your biggest concern. But. I was having I, – I had a couple people trying to help me with this one, and no one could figure it out, and I ended up using – I said this is where learning how to do stuff the wrong way with 3D Builder paid off to my advantage. This is two separate pieces, the cover and then the idler piece. Well, I wanted to carry that fillet around but when i made the piece i started off with two pieces i put them together unfortunately i started off with two pieces and i put them together yeah well, it wouldn't let me slice it on this line it kept erroring out for some reason oh. there was it's like i was like i want to carry this through i said but it won't let me if i try to split it here it won't split the body and no one could figure out why it wouldn't let me split it no one could figure out how to carry that fill it around i ended up slicing it like a 45 here running the fillet this way and then running the fillet this way and then putting the two pieces back together again and it actually worked. Wow. <laughs> but they were like, I would have never thought to do it that way. How'd you do it? I said, because when you put um, chamfers on stuff in 3D Builder, literally to put a chamfer on is you're just going to, you constantly, you break the piece up into all the little components and then you just slice all the edges off and then you put it back together again. Yeah. There's no chamfer function in 3D Builder. And we're boring Tom. He's sitting there playing with his no, I, 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 I no. Time for me to go to bed. Yeah. Peanut so. butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> Did he break his leg? Nope. Okay. Well, I better hop off here, too.
I appreciate yeah, the help. I like you, you, you got me definitely got me one step closer. I don't have a million and one things down this side menu now, so that's that's yeah. an improvement in itself. That, that's a big. And that's I didn't that, know that either. I knew you could do it. I just wasn't sure how. That uh, yeah, like that selection group thing I showed you there or chatted with you earlier. I guess that that you might find helpful. And then same with that sectional analysis. Like you can you can yeah. delete that now if you want. I've played with that a few times doing some oh, of the other stuff. I, but I yeah. do a lot of sectional analysis with parts. Yeah, like I, use I, it I really lot. like using that, but it helps with tolerances and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so. exactly. Especially yeah. when you have to like do 3D printing and you know you got to have that like 0.15 to slash 0.2. Yeah, clear. and then you can just check and make sure like you got your parts offset right and whatever yeah. else. But yeah, you just slide it through it and you can see all the joints and everything. It's awesome. Like, that's like uh, one of there's the so much to learn in confusion. Like, to get to where you got in, in a few weeks or whatever, it's pretty impressive. So, yeah. So, the hardest part for me was learning how to take the tools I knew in 3D Builder and translate them into okay, what are those tools here in Fusion? Once yeah, I, if, once I figured that part, part out, you build part once, you want to build it again, but, but it's like, yeah, new language. Yeah. Once I figured out how to build something I built in 3D Builder and built, I literally took something. I just built it and you know said, "Okay, I need to build this. This is how I would have done it three D builder." And I, I literally built it in three D builder first, and then I had Mike get online with me, and I made all I did was make a stupid little bracket to hang my boom mic on the wall. But I built it in three D builder, and I showed him the picture. Said, "Now show me how to make that in Fusion." Yeah. And in fifteen minutes, what I made in Fusion, what took me an hour to do in three D builder, I'm like, okay, oh, yeah. 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 Makes me want to delete three D builder off my. <laughs> If, if it weren't for the fact I still use it to align my STLs, I probably wouldn't ever use it now. Yeah. See, what you'll start, do you use, uh, like, the parametric stuff at all? Like, do you use uh, parameters when you're building stuff? Depend. Like, what are you talking about? Like, like so you're, like, like where are you doing the hole? Like, for doing the holes, I kind of do that because I said, okay, I do a hole, and I say, yeah, 10 millimeters off of this wall and 15 off of this wall. and. So if you go to, like, modify... Uh, the modify drop down menu, and then right okay. at the bottom it says change parameters. I haven't then, used this, no. Okay, so you click. Uh, so this is this is the most powerful part of Fusion, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Okay, so let's say you have a tolerance, and your tolerance for everything is 0.2 millimeters. So everything is offset by 0.2 millimeters, or you have a tolerance to you build this circle, it's 0.2 millimeters. You create a new parameter called tolerance. Okay. So click on the plus there. Okay, so call this tolerance just for just for the hell of it. Okay, so unit. So now you could do like length. You can do weight. You can do different different whatever uh, units. You can use no units. So let's say you have a count. Uh, so um, when you're doing like a a uh, circular pattern or a square pattern, let's say you want to go three this direction or four this direction, you would just go no unit and that would just be like a number. Okay, okay so, you, so you're sitting on millimeters. So let's say 0 0.2, just type in 0 0.2 for uh, your thing right there. And then whatever, you could add a comment or not. So now hit okay. Okay, now just click on exit out of there. Now click on, uh, let's say construct. Construct a new plane off of that part that, the, that we're looking at. So the offset plane. Okay, click on there. And then, uh, okay, so now for under the distance right there, rather than typing 0 0.2, type tolerance. So start typing tol tolerance. Okay, so hit OK. Okay, so now... Hit yeah, hit OK. So now you're going to have a plane right there, and it's going to be offset by 0 0.2. So let's say you go through your entire thing. So you have a 0 0.2 tolerance. You did offsets all of your holes there for your screws. Right now you probably have a hole, and you made it 10 millimeters wide or whatever. Pick a number. If you wanted to change every single one of those screws, let's say that instead of using an M5 screw, you want to use an M6 screw now. Oh, you yeah. would have to go through every single drawing or every single part, sketch, and change every time you type in point or 10 millimeters or five millimeters, whatever it is, you'd have to change every one of those circles. Okay. Instead, 
if you'd have typed in circle for M5, that was the name of your parameter, you mm -hmm. would now go back to that modify and change parameters. And the thing that says size for this circle and your, your number in there would be five, you would change that to six. And every single time you'd ever type tolerance or, or size of this circle, blah, 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 whatever parameter you decided, it would change every single component in your entire build. So oh, wow. that when they say parametric like design program, that's what I just yeah. showed you there. That's what they're talking about. Okay, so when I created the very build of a mini script, unfortunately, it's already too late for me because I've already well, created all this stuff. But well, it's it's not ever really too late. Like, so let's say if you wanted to change that, you would go through. Um, yeah, you'd have to change them all. Yeah, you'd have to change find your holes, but where it says. So you would create, if, like, let's say, what size are those holes? So I can use those are ten up. millimeter. The one that's highlighted okay. right now is ten millimeter. Okay, so let's say ten millimeter. So every single one of those is ten millimeter. All you would have to do is create a parameter, say, call it uh, screw hole, and under the, um, yeah, yeah, new, yeah, might as well make a new one. So, so make a new one there. So call it screw or assembly screw hole or whatever that particular screw is or m5 screw or so yeah call that 10 millimeter okay so now um every time in a sketch that you've used that 10 millimeter because it's designed for that screw you just go in and instead of having five you would type in the name that you just called it and then if you wanted all of them to change any time after that, you would go to your parameter and just change that number, and it would change every sketch. Anytime you'd ever use that parameter, it would change change that number. So you see how powerful that is, right? Like right now, if you wanted to change those to 12 millimeter, you'd have to go to every sketch you'd ever use that 10 millimeter number. Well, how two. do I set that? Did I just set this to that parameter? Because I didn't do anything other than make a No, you didn't. No, okay. you didn't. So go to the sketch for that part. That's going to be the hard part. I mean, so many different. Half the stuff I don't even have the sketches for. That's the problem because they were created yeah. by somebody else. Yeah. So, like, it doesn't matter right now. But here, here. I can show you. I'll show you my screen here. I'll show you my screen here again. Anyway, we got to okay. kill it, guys. Tom's got to Tom's yeah. go. You, we'll, yeah. we'll do this we'll, another time. We'll do it another time. But I, I, that would be worthwhile for you to learn how to do because yeah. I think it will save you a pile of time. Yep. It's a lot of pre thought though. You gotta do it beforehand. It's just it's just but you can do it at a later date. You just have to go back and change all the things that you'd want to in the first But time. honestly someone like him, he should have a, a built in and I should do it too because I use like five millimeter screws all the time. You can pre build that into fusion so you yeah. automatically five millimeter screw a new, a new file and yeah. boom you can use that parameter again. And I yeah. think I just screwed up. I said don't save because I didn't want to save your the yeah. parameter stuff we did, and I don't think I saved all those groups I made. <laughs> well, now, now you know how. You'll be twice as fast. No, it, it, oh, would, yeah. save that. it would have auto-saved some of that stuff. Oh, yeah, I better go. All right. Yeah. All right, man. All right, Thanks, guys. Stop in, guys. we got to rename this whole stream because I was going to talk about my freaking printer bed, and never once did I talk about the bed sheets. <laughs> right, the pillowcases. Okay, good night. Right. This was right. cool. Good night, guys. Night, guys. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for all the people that have been here. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Pretty good. <laughs> Get some sleep. All right, we're out of here. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Have a great night.